making of all this. Manet, I mean, diversity as as itself, there's nothing wrong with with that. I mean, we 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 want to hire people who have from diverse backgrounds uh, because in our business we want people who have diverse understandings of this great country, America, different experiences. But so when a company says we're going to re re repeal our DEI policies, what do they mean? How does it work practically? Well, a lot of these companies, and again, as Dan mentioned, this is a wave that really took off in 2020 during the George Floyd protests, have put in policies that essentially are hard quotas. They're saying we need to have this number of African Americans, we need to have this number of uh, lesbian and gay employees and things like that, and particularly at the executive level, they were creating standards that said that we're going to consider membership of these protected classes as a plus factor, essentially something that's going to put For hiring and promotion. Exa hiring and promotion alike. Uh, and the incentives of the executives were tied to meeting these standards. So traditionally, if you're the CEO of a company, you are receiving your compensation and bonus based on your performance metrics, how you're driving the company towards profit. The DEI policies have expanded that to say, if you are hitting these performance metrics in terms of hiring and promoting minorities, that's also going to be something that's going to affect your compensation. Uh, and so these are very different from just a general commitment to diversity. It's creating hard metrics, and that's exactly what the Supreme Court has recently said is now in legal doubt, and they're going to face a legal liability if they don't amend these policies. Kim, a 